Hi there everybody, James here. Uh, today's video is um, another 3D printing one, um, naturally. I think that's pretty much what my channel's become now. Um, and uh, I'm going to be showing you some uh, uh, the prep work um, that I do for... Um, oh, one second, I'm just going to change the lighting a bit. Um, the prep work for... Um, some KMFP uh, mechanopods. So um, I'm currently making a army for it, um, and at the moment there's only one kit that's actually come out. But um, it's a really versatile kit, um, especially if you have um, a c some other kits as well. Where you can take like additional weapons uh, so um, yeah I thought I would actually go from um, uh, actually having these uh, recently coming off the print bed so this is what they look like when they uh, when they're printed so tree supports on a raft um, and this uh, yeah it's actually pretty clean and uh, with the mechanopods, um, there's three 8 and 15 millimeter ones, and uh, these are based on the 15 mil. And the reason for that is um, it actually has the feet and the body separate, whereas with the other two, it's all combined. Um, so it gives a bit more versatility, um, and also there's less supports that need to be made. So you can print a bit more from your spool. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to show off what it actually looks like um, to go from the print bed to the actual model. So obviously you're going to need a couple of things. Um, you're going to need obviously the, the plastic itself. You're also going to need a hobby knife, a crafting knife, you're going to need the base and some super glue. Okay, so not a whole lot. So let me get, there you go, all of that. It does not take very long, so let's get into it. Uh, the top is super simple. So a lot of this can come off really easily. So I like to get the side and do a bit of pulling. There we go, like that. And it's actually a bit tougher than normal, I'm gonna be honest. Not a problem though. And uh, sometimes uh, this pit here um, is still in the hole. If that is the case, you just uh, take your hobby, your, your um, clippers, and you um, pull it out. Uh, now this is actually nearly done. Uh, you just take off the. There you go. So this is actually a scaled up one. In fact, well, technically, they are scaled up regardless because I'm doing 28 mil uh, but this is actually a heavy one and um, I actually took a couple of the weapons from the uh, scout knight um, and in the uh, in cure I just uh, attached them made sure that they were level and uh, I've got uh, five technically five different types of these guys um, four for regular heavy weapons teams and another that I call a drone node which is a independent buffing robot and um, yeah in fact this guy is basically done now this it comes out incredibly clean um, I usually chop off this tiny bit at the bottom and 
that's honestly it. And um, it's always this little tiny, tiny bit there. I then take a hobby knife and just tidy this up like so. And that's all done. This one's a bit more complicated. So with this one, what I had to do is by default, the feet actually have an angle to them. Um, they are not flat like this. However, even with a raft and having no, um, no gap between the raft and the model, it was still failing to print. So what I ended up doing is just lowering the model by one millimeter. And what all that did is just made it so that it was flat. And ever since I did that, I've had no issues whatsoever. So for this one, what I end up doing is uh, doing these parts first. I'm sorry if um, it seems a bit uh, shaky. Um, not much I can do about that, unfortunately. So you do that four times. Okay, so now that I've done the center, I'm going to do the legs. So I do that and that. There you go. And now you can just pry it off, like so. Now, we look up the underside, see if there's anything that uh, looks out of place. So we can get rid of this section here. Do a tiny bit of clean up there. Remember my motto forget about the underside, nobody's gonna see it. I'm gonna do some clean up around the sides, but honestly not a whole lot. Get that little bit there off as well. So that's a bit more flush. And then I do a little bit of cleaning up of the feet. So I take my hobby knife. Now this is actually kind of a a really blunted one, so I need to change it. Uh, in fact, let me do that now because otherwise it's going to be really janky. <laughs> uh, here we go. Oh, come out. So, oh, one second. Ah, right, sorry about that. <laughs> Some at the door. Um, okay, just put the uh, last one back in. Right. So, let's see if we can get this on camera.
Yeah, because what we're what we're doing at the moment is actually cutting off the raft. And yeah, without the raft, uh, it just wouldn't. It won't. It just won't stick. Um, it's four points that it struggles with for most of the print. So if it it knocks it. Um, which you know it typically does um, it's a uh, failed print um, and that looks okay Okay, honestly that one there could be a bit better. Okay, now just uh, test it on a regular surface. Make sure it doesn't move around and yeah, that's absolutely fine. So, that's the clean up, which didn't take long at all. I think it's uh, super glue for dabs. One, two, three, four. Now this goes on a 50 mil base. So I've actually done the, um, been doing the army book for these. Um, even with only a single kit out, I've got four units in that army book, and um, it functioned a bit like um, kind of a cross between um, Human Defense Force, Robot Legions, and uh, Demons, which seems like a, a weird combination, but um, a brief overview is they've got a couple of abilities um, that are army wide so the first one is obviously the robot special rule that uh, robot legions have um, and basically what that means is um, they can never be pinned um, which is really really good which it basically means that you have to get rid of the entire unit um, or they're going to be grabbing an, an objective um, and then uh, basically if you fail a morale test um, instead of uh, failing and, and, and pinning what happens instead is uh, you roll a dice for every wound left in the unit and uh, you then uh, take a wound it's a 50-50 chance of just taking another wound. So they absolutely crumble when below half health. Um, but the enemy does have to kill every single model, which I don't particularly like for Robot Legion. Um, they're really expensive models because they have really good weapons. Um, but I think it works really well here. Um, they are just like little little robots. They're like a, a swarm army, and they have stats uh, like a base profile equivalent to a guardsman. So at this level of um, of gameplay, they function very much like an infantry heavy guard list. Um, and so I've got some little guys. Let me just show you some little guys. So these are on 32 mil bases. They cannot go on anything smaller if you scale them up to 28 millimeter. Um, and that is because the, the legs are just way too wide. They barely fit on 32 mils. Um, but yeah, they, they've got a, a quality and a defense of five on these guys. Uh, these have a quality of uh, five, but a defense of four. So the bigger these guys are, the uh, the higher defense they have. Um, 
and uh, their weapons by default is they have these little laser eyes so the laser eye is um, actually probably better than a guardsman so it's only 12 inches so it's, it's very short range um, and they have AP1 which is the equivalent of a heavy pistol um, and then another little signature uh, attribute of the army is um, obviously they all have laser eyes but if they're bigger the la laser eyes are a bit bigger so these medium profiles on like the um, uh, the 40 mil and the 50 mil bases I don't have any 40 mils yet but um, this is equivalent to like a heavy weapons team okay so you can have uh, a unit of these guys they can take a heavy weapon or they can be taken in units of of three um, they are tough three as well and uh, yeah these guys have uh, AP2 still short range still um, a 12 inch uh, range and again the bigger the model the higher AP it gets uh, but there's currently only two uh, two different sizes at the moment regular drones and heavy weapon drones um, and there's four different weapons that I've decided for these guys so this one is a neutron laser um, it's basically a laser uh, cannon with radiation um, but uh, minus six inch range there is then uh, this guy here it's got an eradicator and that is a bit like a plasma cannon but again it's got um, it's got 30 inch range um, AP I think it was AP3 because um, regular normally it's AP4 um, so they get less AP but again they get radiation uh, then we've got this guy just a basic missile launcher and then I've got uh, an auto cannon and that that makes up the the weapons for the heavy weapons teams okay um, it's not completely mix and match so uh, every model in the unit has to have the same weapon unlike regular guards guard ones um, so they, they have to be more specialized and then this guy is what I'm calling a control node uh, a drone and um, basically this is a, a tough six unit that offers a numerous amount of buffs so this guy has about six or seven different buffs that he can do you can only have one of them um, and uh, these guys get mini guns instead uh, it's because uh, the, the rules for um, balance validation say that you can't go above um, four damage on a tough three unit um, so they can't do mini guns um, so I decided well to have a, a use to have these guys let's give it to the tough six guy um, and yeah basically um, he activates he's got his little mini gun and they can give units varying buffs so one of them is like reanimator so we can select two units and they get regeneration um, for the next attack okay so if uh, an opponent could um, attack it with um, like a really small unit potentially just for them to use up the regeneration and then hit it with a much bigger unit later um, would be a way around it but they might not have that ability um, there's also ways to get additional range on their weapons or um, plus one to hit or plus one AP um, and it just makes it really really versatile it's very similar to the robot legions variant which is uh, which is this one here this is the small tripod walker 
um, which again I believe this guy is where reanimator comes from um, and uh, the other large um, army-wide rule is uh, ambushing everything gets ambush um, and there's a this is probably the primary special rule um, and basically what that means is uh, especially the way that I play so I play with objective cards um, so basically we have a, sh a shared deck and we draw five cards um, and we each try to do the same objectives each turn okay so um, unlike the, the basic one page rules um, wh which only care about the last turn um, we can score objectives on any turn which means that on turn uh, one um, there's only one unit that can actually uh, ambush on turn one Okay, which is a load of uh, mines with beacons and uh, basically their job is to get into um, important positions and then the beacons allow them uh, allow the rest of my army to ambush near them with no penalty and uh, what this yeah it basically the the um the opponent has to try and kill those otherwise it's going to be a right nightmare for him um, in later turns um, however <laughs> because uh, I don't have a lot if if anything um, on the first turn he could potentially rush onto multiple objectives and claim a load of victory points right off the bat um, and then I have three turns to basically try and mitigate that by being being able to teleport into really good positions um, and basically being range with with every unit from the get go. So I've done two games so far, um, pretty small point games of twelve fifty, um, and. I won one and lost one. Um, both games are really fun um, and the core mechanics of the army seem to work really well. My opponent enjoyed it um, and yeah um, it, it, it just it was a good start definitely. Uh, I've currently been printing a load so the 1250 game that I had initially was 30 drones uh, and two sets of three heavy weapons and a control node and uh, a min unit of mines. Um, I have since done like 20 weapons teams and 40, uh, uh, 40 basic drone drones. Um, so now I can do like two and a half thousand points um, which I'm hoping to do next Tuesday. Um, they, in terms of actual printing, they printed out really nicely, um, really cleanly, um, even better than the Orbital Knights, which I already think come out excellent. Um, if there was ever an army you you wanted that um, is super unique, has um, so many options with just one kit, like. The, the kit itself, right, is incredibly basic, okay? It is two sets of legs and four sets of head, okay? Um, and this basically allows you to have, like, these little dome tops, these um, these flat tops with um, the single strip on the side, the double strip on the side, and the dome tops also get a... Centurion, let me find one. There you go, that's the Centurion. So I use these and these as leader models. And um, with a couple of other kits, um, 
to be more specific, um, the, all of these weapons came from the Scout Knight. Um, uh, this came from one of the Orbital Knight's uh, artillery tanks. Um, and yeah, I mean, th there's a couple of things you can do. There's um, some uh, plenty of melee arms as well that you could have on the side if you wanted to go that route um, from the Scout Knight, Scout Knight as well. Um, I'm also uh, thinking of doing a 65 millimeter base variant of this using the drift crawler legs um, from the Martian cyborgs um, and uh, as well as one of the flat tops again and uh, again the same scout knight weapons um, and that's going to be the equivalent of a uh, like a HDF uh, sentinel thing um, so sentinels I think are 60 or 65 mil bases um, and uh, yeah I'm actually going to because I don't need many of them I, I ended up buying these uh, bases from Amazon um, for um, 40 times 32 millimeter um, for 12 pound and 20 times 50 mil uh, for 10 pound um, but because I'm only going to need like two or three of these I'm just going to print them off um, so these actually come from uh, I wonder if I can read this I can't I'm afraid I can't actually read that if you can go ahead um, but they're actually free I believe there's actually a on my mini factory there's a guy that does these bases that allow you to do magnets in them he does them for uh, rounded uh, oval and square um, and they're really really cool um, so yeah that should give you a good idea the size difference there so um, and yeah that should give me a bit more heavy hitting firepower um, won't give me quite the same amount as a full blown battle tank but um, two heavy weapons um, and a larger laser weapon as well so the laser laser weapon is going to get um, AP3 on the 65 mils um, so and, and they'll be faster as well they'll be um, yeah they'll be faster they'll be going an extra two inches on w walking or an extra four inches when uh, rushing so that should be quite a nice big boon there um, so yeah um, I'm really impressed with the kit um, the kit itself I, I can't remember if I said this at the beginning but they come with 3, 8 and 15 millimeter um, by default um, the 15 millimeters have separate legs though he separate heads and uh, and legs so whereas the others are all, all the same um, highly recommended to pick it up and um, is great is it is a great body for kit bashing so I can't wait to, to come up with uh, several more units um, we do have an official heavy weapons team coming um, but that won't be for about a month yet so um, yeah really really cool models um, thank you for um, for watching the vid and um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it any questions um, feel free to put them down below and I will answer as best as I can All right thank you have a good day bye bye